Welcome to a full review of the brand new Kia Forte. And you're going to see things covered on this car that you normally wouldn't see, and that's because you deserve it. Now take a look at the new Forte. In this glorious rental car white, it looks like a standard compact car with a little bit of style. It's not edgy, it's very conservative, and the press and Kia themselves are like, well, look at the, the Stinger influences. There's no Stinger influences here. It has nothing to do with that car at all. You buy this because it is simple, cheap transportation. And much like Hyundai and Kia have been doing for quite a while now, they pack so much crap in here, so much good stuff for the price that that's why you would buy it. Let's take a look at that. Now, if you're looking for a bargain basement car, you get the Kia Rio in the US. That's the cheapest, it's cheaper than this. And this has a big price swing from about 17,000 all the way up to like 26,000, which is crazy to me. But when you get this moderately specced out like this, the EX model, you're getting things that you don't even see in luxury cars heated and cooled seats, which is amazing, although it doesn't remember it when you turn the car on and off. You have lane keep assist, you have blind spot monitoring. The safety suite of Hyundai and Kia software wise is really good. It's one of the, the best companies that does this at an affordable price range. All your safety stuff works and it's not annoying. You get into the HVAC controls, all physical, and we're back to a car that does not require the touchscreen to utilize them. So, you know, all of it is physical, which is amazing, and you can see it, it's legible, it tells you the temperature down below here, and at night, even at night, everything looks good and it's simple to use. Your infotainment is the classic Hyundai Kia interface. It's pretty quick, there's little drama, your phone pairs up easily, even if you forget to pair it up. Um, all the buttons are pretty much physical and you can toggle a favorites mode to turn the screen on and off, which I love. And then, you know, the other stuff that they add here when you tart it up, wireless charging, you know, if you have a phone that supports that. And I mean, it's kind of funny because it's not fast wireless charging, which is coming out. So you put your phone in there like 10 minutes, and it basically does nothing. So you got to have it in there a while to make it usable. Your armrest is adjustable, sliding forward and back. The seating surfaces are okay. I mean, the plastics in here are not the best, but there's still enough style to break it up. Like the, the holes in the speaker grills are a nice touch. But let's get into some of the negative stuff. There's too much piano gloss plastic in here on the doors, on the center area, on like above the steering wheel. It's just really chintzy and it's always dirty and it looks scratched up already. The interior space, as much as it looks and feels good, I don't know what it is with Kia's. I always get one that has these weird buzzes and rattles in it. And this is another one. It's coming kind of from the roof area and the sunroof on the passenger side. And I just, it, it's on and off and it depends on temperature. So it's one of those things. Get in it, see if your car has any rattles. And kind of the worst thing about this interior is I just don't like the seats. I feel like, you know, you can definitely tell the price point here, the seating material feels, you know, the pleather feels cheap and they, they feel really stiff, like kind of cardboardish. They're not particularly ergonomic, even though, you know, it has electronic adjustability. It just doesn't feel like a, a good seat. It feels like it's representative of a, of a cheaper car. And, you know, again, you can't have everything here. What they're trying to do is pack as many features in here as possible for the price because their research shows that people that are first time car buyers of the younger generation wants tech, tech, technology, technology, and more of that. And that's what you're getting in here. But this is still an extremely good interior space overall. All right, the back seats. Obviously, if you're getting a four door, this has to be usable. And I'm surprised that how many cars have a back seat space that sucks. And the Forte is pretty good. The seat is moved where the driver or where I'm normally sitting and I have three inches of leg room. There's a cup holder on the back. There's two little vents, vents back here so you're not freezing your ass off or, you know, overheated. So, I mean, it, it basically has what you would need back here. The headrests are good. And I would say if you have a pet because of how generic this pleather, whatever the hell vinyl it is back here, if you have a pet, this is going to be super easy to clean up uh, if they're urinating or defecating back here. But let's take a look at the trunk. 
Gibran274 just texted me. He's like, can you tell me what I can fit in the Kia Forte trunk? Yeah, sure, Gibran, let's talk about it. The release is built into the camera module, which is amazing because you're not hunting for where the hell it is. Some cars are here, there, right under the Kia logo. Stupid simple. This trunk space is literally bigger than my ex-wife's There's so much stuff you can fit in here from bags of cement, uh, my knapsack, a stroller to fit all my teddy bears. I mean, it's exactly what you want and you can fold down the rear seats by pulling these little levers. So, you know, again, inside outside is something that you have to go and look at to decide whether you can deal with this on a day-to-day -day basis. But let's get into the shop to talk about really what makes the Kia special mechanically. Now, I know you've probably been drooling all over yourself because you've been waiting to see the underbody of the Kia Forte, and here it is. Now, if you're wondering where this piece of machinery is made, it's made in Mexico. And you talk to some people, and the perception is these things are made in a barn in the desert. Now, well, that's not the case. And when you look at some of the video of these manufacturing facilities, they are insanely advanced and automated. The robotics is off the deep end. And it also gives you a chance to see things like the structural adhesives being applied and how the body is dipped and all that stuff. It's kind of cool. But back to this, back to here and now, this car is built to a price point. There's no doubt. You can see in just the material choices, the stamped steel subframe, the lower control arms, and then you look at the knuckle design, which is a piece of cast steel. It is so small. It is so chintzy looking compared to so many cars, but really, you don't need this to be some overkill beast because it is a lighter weight vehicle. It's more simple. When I say simple, easy to service. I can get to the oil drain plug bolt right here without any covers. I can get to the oil filter with just doing this. I mean, that is amazing if you want something that you know you can service. In all the way from the front to the back, it's that way. But let's take a look at the rump. And one of the biggest questions I get is from people asking, What's a newer vehicle that emulates the simplicity and reliability of cars from the 90s and early 2000s? And this is about as close as you're gonna get. And there's some big differences between cars of this generation and the previous generation. And most of that has to do with noise and vibration reduction. And you look at this car, you know, like many of them, you have composite underbody panels that help to quiet the car down, smooth out airflow, like, you know, air directors that are across this whole beam here. You look at the underbody coating, the underbody adhesives. They're trying to make cars quieter because that's one of the biggest complaints. The second thing that you're gonna see is, you know, they're using strut suspensions in the front. You have, in the case of this car, you have a torsion beam rear end, and a lot of this is about cost reduction and packaging. And I'm gonna talk about the torsion beam, and this is something I asked Kia directly during the launch of this car, they, they took out independent rear suspension. And everybody's like, why would you do that? Well, here's the straight answer. People want infotainment, they want Android Auto, they want wireless charging, they want moon roofs, they want heated and cooled seats. And to add an independent rear suspension on a car like this from a manufacturing standpoint costs them about $250 to $300 per car to do. Now, all you have to do is the math. If they sell 100,000 of these, it is a ton of money, a lot of money in manufacturing. And the thing is, the people that are gonna be buying this don't even know what the hell a torsion beam is. So people are willing to sacrifice kind of performance and ride quality, well, to have the other things in cars, and it's all about compromise. Now the rest of the back end, there's some good things here. Like I said, everything's so open. You can get at everything, you can service it. And then you have a manual parking brake, which means if you get the manual version of this car, manual transmission, you still have that traditional parking brake that you don't have to worry about uh, electronic parking brakes or that switch. And one of the things is you can see why they're going away from it in terms of packaging. You have to run these cables through a center, center tunnel. It's just more difficult and cumbersome to manufacture when you can just have a simple wiring harness that goes to the back of the car. But it's here. And again, this is definitely one of the more basic cars you're gonna get. So you may like that, you may not. Under the hood of the Forte, and this is one of the biggest surprises, and I know you're gonna wait for the punchline, but there isn't one. Because if you're in North America, you're getting a two liter four cylinder that is naturally aspirated with port injection only, no direct injection. 
And this runs exclusively in the Atkinson cycle, which means it can do different types of overlap, basically keeping the intake valves open longer and it reduces pumping losses, a whole bunch of other stuff that gets ridiculously technical, but this is about fuel efficiency. And I'm telling you right now, if you drove a direct injection version of this side to by side, you would never know the difference. And at the press launch, the journalists were like, wait, it doesn't have direct injection? Why, why would you do that? <laughs> and it, it's so dumbfounding. This is exactly what people have been asking for in the cheap or simple or the affordable car segment. And it's here. And the best part about this is if you get this in a base model, you can get a six speed manual with it. Now, granted, you lose a lot of the features, which sucks, but you get 200 pounds less and you lose a lot of the complication. Now, if you don't get the base model, you get Kia's new IVT. And this is the cute little names that manufacturers are trying to give CVTs to avoid calling it a CVT. It's a CVT. So why is it different? Everybody's gonna say it's different. Well, here's the real deal with it. Kia claims that they study, they sat on the, in the back seat for a long time on the sidelines waiting for all these other companies to make them so they could reverse engineer what worked and what didn't work. And this is a culmination of that. You have a chain style belt, you have a new pulley design, new oiling system, and basically new logic. And they wanted people to get in here and never think it was a CVT. And that's partly why they're trying not to call it that. And I'm gonna tell you something. Even if you're not interested in this car, if you're a car person, get behind the wheel of this car and tell me this is not one of the best CVTs you've ever been in. In most cases, nobody's gonna know the difference between a regular torque converted automatic. And I think that alone says enough, but I'm gonna talk about that more in the drive and I'll show you some examples, examples of it. But you know, the great thing is Kia and Hyundai are really trying their best to make the small car still interesting and not vastly overcomplicated. They're still getting the fuel efficiency, they're getting the emissions output that they want or the lower emissions, and they're putting it in a package that most people can afford. So hats off to them again, much like I said with the Kia Rio, let's get on the road. Now people are gonna buy this and they're gonna be enamored with all the features. But how does it drive? And I think that's really the big thing. You know that they've kind of cut money out of the suspension and driving along normally, this is very composed. It's pretty quiet for what it is and it rides well over good pavement. But the one thing that Kia tends to do over the Hyundai counterparts is it just feels vastly too, just vastly too firm for what this is. And when you get over broken pavement, you notice it a lot more. Its reflexes are quick. I mean, you know, the benefit is it just feels like a light, fun car to drive. But as your everyday commute starts and you're just driving straight, it gets a bit annoying. Uh, and I've tried playing with tire pressures as well, lowering them. It seems to help just a little bit. But I think this is a car that they would do, it would serve the customers better just to go a little bit more soft, namely with the, the torsion beam rear end in the back. So that's just something to say. Now, in terms of the overall handling, you know, if you start to drive it hard, I feel like in terms of just overall handling, it's gonna impress most people on first impressions because it does have really quick turn in and Kia's, Kia's and Hyundai's have both been really good at doing this where they've, they've got like just lightning fast steering and sometimes it's a little bit disconcerting. It's like, why is this thing turn in so quick? Why do they have the steering calibrated so fast? But that's just part of what makes some of these cars a little bit more fun to drive. They're lighter, they're smaller and you know, the side effect is they do handle a lot better because of it. And I guess, you know, for this price point, I can't be too hard on the ride quality. Yes, it's a little bit too firm for me, but I don't think most people are gonna notice it. And it's one of those cars you're probably just gonna have to get into to, to figure out, you know, is this gonna be something you want? And I say that a lot. Now let's take a listen to the motor and just see how the CVT reacts and how this engine sounds.
Now I'm gonna come to a stop here and just see how this car gets off the line. Now, CVTs typically struggle with this, so let's take a look. Now this is the best CVT I've ever driven. And I'm gonna say it's better than some torque converted automatics in a more affordable price range. It's more responsive. It, it knows when to kind of give you the higher RPMs to get the motor going. It doesn't make the motor feel like it's horribly underpowered like the CHR I drove. In fact, like if you dip, just tip into the throttle, I'm gonna kind of get the rubs up here. It kind of, gets the revs up and then you push it a little bit more it's instantaneous and then it gives you shifts that feel almost identical i mean almost identical to a torque converted automatic with physical gears and i think that's the most impressive part i never got in this car and felt like it distracted me that it was weird or awkward or annoying. The tra transmission always responds the way that I want it to when I'm driving. And I think if you're phobic of this, I would be too. It's a first generation CVT for them. I don't know how it's gonna hold up. That's the truth of it. But this is really an achievement for them. I, it's good that they sat out and waited and they figured out how to do this right because this is one of the best parts about the Kia Forte. Now, other than that, you know, the engine is typical four cylinder stuff. It's not gonna blow you away. It doesn't sound very good, but it doesn't feel totally sluggish either. I'm getting amazing fuel economy, you know, beating on it. I'm getting 34 miles to the gallon in the winter. When I'm on the highway, it's always 40. And this is something that you're going to have consistency in. Fuel efficiency, it's, that, that, that's its best suit. It's pretty much fun to drive. For the most part, it's comfortable, the seats aside, and the transmission is amazing. But enough of that, let's get to the final thoughts. Final thoughts on the new Kia Forte. In short, this is a good car. And it's a good car because Kia has a grasp on how to make compact vehicles not only good to drive, but not overcomplicating it. And some manufacturers don't get that, and they do. And granted, yes, they've pulled money out of areas they really should be putting it in in terms of you know, making it a better driving experience. But this is that entry-level car, and you can't have everything. And at this base price of like 17 grand, you get a motor that is not direct injected. You get a six speed manual and you still get great fuel efficiency. This is a car that normal people are gonna buy, that you have to buy in order to go to work, to do your daily tasks. And I know you watch so many, people watch so many of these videos and it's like, I don't wanna see a car that's $80,000 I'll never be able to afford or never be able to drive or most likely. And it gets tiring because everything's so damn expensive. The Forte is not, and you don't have a huge penalty for the low price point. They finally made a CVT that I would recommend anybody that wants an automatic driving, you know, assuming it's gonna last. The motor is good, the interior, the tech, the features are great for what you want in this price range. Is it the best? No. Is it the best riding car, the best handling car? No, but it's a, a vehicle that you could legitimately drive every day and not feel like you're a piece of shit or in the poorhouse. And I said the same thing about the Rio. They know what they're doing in the compact segment and I give them a lot of props for that. Hopefully they continue to improve this and people buy it so they keep improving the small car segment. But thank you for watching. Take care, I'll see you in the next video. This savage geese, I hate him, I hate him. I'm gonna show you how to get back at him on Yelp and all that other stuff.